Watch the news on any given day, and it will seem like the world is coming apart. But believe it or not, we're living in an era of peace. This era, which has persisted since the end of World War II, is sometimes called Pax Americana, which is Latin for American peace. Now, this isn't to say that it is an absolute peace. Following World War II, there was the Korean War, Lebanon Crisis, Vietnam War, Invasion of Grenada, Invasion of Panama, Gulf War, Somali Civil War, Bosnian War, Kosovo War, War in Afghanistan, Iraq War, military intervention in Libya, War on ISIL, and those are just some of the conflicts which the U.S. was directly involved in. There are plenty more besides. But this period of Pax Americana is a relative piece. Plenty of conflicts, but on a much smaller scale. In fact, battle-related deaths have been dropping significantly around the world since World War II. The idea is, when there is one major power acting as a sort of global policeman, there are fewer large-scale conflicts. In Pax Americana, America is the global policeman. Pax Americana is the world we've all known. It's a world in which English is the default language of trade, technolo technology, commerce, diplomacy. It's a world in which uh, transactions are seamless. It's a world in which values like openness, tolerance, pluralism are the values towards which most of the world aspires if it doesn't um, actually enjoy. And it's a world in which uh, there's very little chance that some other nation can impose its will on the United States or the free world. Today, the U.S. spends more money on defense than the seven next biggest spenders combined. Nearly $600 billion. The U.S. Navy's carrier fleet is nearly twice the size of all other nations combined. Why should the U.S. be responsible for paying for all of this? What would happen if the U.S. stopped being the world's policeman. I think we're witnessing that right now. Look at Russia's invasion of Ukraine. First, the seizure of Crimea, and then, of course, the uh, uh, ambiguous warfare, the effort to create an eastern Ukraine, a breakaway republic. For the first time in recent history, the idea of Russia-NATO confrontation is realistic. NATO. You may have heard that name before. NATO stands for North Atlantic Treaty Organization. It's a military alliance that's existed since 1949, a few years after World War II. Today, there are 28 different member states, including the United States, all of whom have agreed to defend the others in the event of war. What might happen if we didn't? Good. Мирно жили люди. Мирно жили люди. Пришли украинские войска, которые борются с сепаратистами и террористами. Кусок шифера куда ушел? In 2014, fierce fighting broke out here in eastern Ukraine between government forces and Russian-backed separatists. The destruction is inescapable. В один момент произошла война, неизвестно откуда и почему. Стреляли друг в друга. Значит, украинская армия была вот на повороте на Красный Лиман. Ну сколько тут, Ваня, километров? Километров пять. Вот там у нас стояла украинская армия, а вот здесь, вот, вот здесь, вот возле шиномонтажа и напротив нашего дома, тут были окопы ополченцев. Где они взялись, что оно взялось, и откуда они взялись, никто ничего не знает. Залетали и нашли мы в сарае это. Ну вот если двери вот такие дырки, понятно, какими осколками все это билось. Вот осколки такие здесь летали. Ну ты же видишь, что тут в огороде было кто на сколько, которые там понаходили. Life in the Donbass on February of 2014 was normal. 
and people had jobs, they had lives, they had food. Then Moscow began this hybrid war in April of 14. And as a result of that hybrid war, uh, I think the current number is 2.2 million people fled. And the people who've remained have it very difficult. Это тяжело сказать словами, потому что как бы там ни было, вот понимаешь, допустим, там, да, война, стреляют, перестрелка, там снаряды взрываются, это не видишь. И фильм это одно восприятие, а когда своим зрением воспринимаешь, это страшно, это просто, когда все тут горело. Ну, у нас... Герман зовут нашего мальчика. Он две недели вообще не говорил. Ну, вот он, вот он молчал и все. Извините. Ну, для него это больная тема. И здоровья нет, и дома нет. Ну, извините. Сильно обижает слабого. То есть Россия обижает Украину. А Америка ну, должна выступить. Ну, во всяком случае, Америка везде участвует, ну, будем говорить так, рассудит, как говорится. Вот. Ну и в этой ситуации, я думаю, они э, гораздо больше знают, чем мы, простые люди, то есть о нашей верхушке. И они разберутся, кто прав, кто виноват. Why do people around the world look to America for help? How did the U.S. become the world's policeman? Through three and a half years of Holocaust, the soldier moved in an agonizing but relentless march, pushing back the encroachments of aggression until the enemy finally lay crushed and defeated. When World War II ended in Europe, the preparations to bring millions of American soldiers home had already begun, and many Americans expected to return to relative isolation and because the world he had preserved seemed at last so ready for peace, he turned his pursuits to peaceful things. However, the Soviet Union's influence and actions in Eastern Europe were rapidly expanding. In 1947, as the Soviet Union and other communist countries' influence grew in Greece, Turkey, and Iran, the U.S. turned to Britain to halt the advance of communism. Great Britain, once the foremost global superpower, was nearly bankrupt from the long and costly efforts of World War II. They simply could not afford to assist in fending off the Soviet Union from Western Europe, and so the United States would have to lead the effort. This was a major turning point. U.S. President Harry Truman delivered a speech arguing, in what came to be known as the Truman Doctrine, that it must be the policy of the United States to support free people who are resisting attempted subjugation by armed minorities or by outside pressure. Truman's position was that the U.S. could not ignore the Soviet Union's forced expansion into independent nations and that American interests in security extended beyond America's physical borders. This was the origin of the American superpower that exists today and America's role as a global policeman. Even in the, the very long sweep of history, the Pax Americana has been one of the great successes of all time. If you think about the amount of economic and technological progress that the, not just the United States, but the whole world has seen in the last 80 years. If you think about the way that the Pax Americana was able to adjust to accommodate the decolonization of the European empires that so many emerging countries have now integrated effectively into the global economy, whether you think of India or uh, in its own way China. Um, the, the end of great power war in Europe, or at least the longest intermission in such war, um, the integration of Eastern Europe into the European Union after World War, after the Cold War. Uh, these achievements are just extraordinary. Do other nations really want American assistance in these times? Are the treaties that exist between the U.S. and allies, like those in the North Atlantic Treaty Organization or NATO, just pretenses for the U.S. to stick its nose in other people's business? 
Meryl Megra is National Security Advisor to the President of Estonia. Of course it concerns us the fact that Russia has violated international law in, in annexing Crimea, in attacking Ukraine, in throwing the international rule book out of the window. It concerns us that uh, a powerful country in Europe sees that the use of force is the way to go. And for us, uh, what is important is the transatlantic link to work, uh, the US to be together with Europe. Because from a small country's point of view, it's pretty obvious for us that alone um, we cannot um, succeed much. Mr. Putin has said, and senior Russian officials besides Putin have said, that there need to be new rules of global order or there'll be no rules. They've said that the post-Cold War settlement in Europe is unacceptable to them. They have said that they have the right, in fact the duty, to protect not just ethnic Russians, but Russian speakers wherever they live. Those arguments were used to justify the Kremlin's aggression in Georgia. They were used to justify the Kremlin's aggression in Crimea. And 25% of the people in uh, Latvia and 25% of the people in Estonia are ethnic Russians and Russian speakers. So the Kremlin could use the same logic to conduct military operations in the Baltic states, who happen to be members of NATO, whom we are bound by NATO charter to defend with our military. You're watching Operation Saber Strike, an annual military exercise in the Baltic states led by the U.S. Army. This year, the exercise is here in Estonia. Since 2010, the militaries of NATO members and partners commit time and resources to engage in a display of their military prowess and, hopefully, to project a convincing deterrent power. For the countries very small like Estonia or Latvia and Lithuania, it is very important to develop uh, its own defense forces, its own capabilities, but more importantly, it is very important uh, to work with our strong allies in order to deter uh, the enemies, whoever they might be. This is what allies do. We train together, and, and so this is working our interoperability, and this is ensuring uh, that we as an alliance work well together and making sure we're prepared. And there's no better way to uh, keep the peace than to be prepared. So what does that mean? Why would preparing for war help keep peace? Seems like you could just as easily say preparing for war might provoke a war. Would the United States really risk a war with Russia in defense of Estonia? Remember, they are an ally, a member of NATO. I would, I would think that there'd be tremendous confidence. I mean, the, the words of our leaders going back to President Truman um, have been that the, the United States is the guarantor, along with our allies, of, of peace. I mean, the U.S. has always had this um, tension between the forces that want to um, collaborate in the world and be involved and those that say, you know, the, the more isolationist tendency to mind our own business and, and stay home. But every time that we've followed that inclination, situations deteriorate. You know, it's, it's a lesson we learn over and over again, but I think I have no doubt and I don't think my, my colleagues in the U.S. government have any doubt that um, the secret to success is U.S. involvement. There is a sense in which American foreign policy is at its best when we are really face a crisis. But at the same time, when, when, things, you know, when, when things don't seem to be that urgent, we, we want to get back to watching, you know, TV. Um, you know, we're not Sparta, you know. America is not a society that's organized for war, conquest, and foreign policy. The, the core of our, of our society is Americans enjoying the freedom 
to express themselves and do what's in, what it's in them to do. And usually then what happens is somebody comes along and whacks us on the head with a two by four and reminds us that there's a world out there and we need to think about it. The United States has been the world's policeman for just over 70 years. It's not a long time by historical standards. We will be the dominant power for the rest of this century and we need a foreign policy that is adequate to our primacy. We are not going to be uh, going into uh, an old age home and uh, pensioned off into a comfortable retirement. So long as we remain that number one nation, we need uh, a, a foreign policy that reflects our place in the world, our interests, our values. So what do you think? Does the U.S. have an obligation to continue as the world's policeman? To keep the peace and protect our allies and others? If an ally can't afford to defend themselves, is it the responsibility of more powerful nations like the U.S. to bear the financial burden of defending them? Should we strive to continue this Pax Americana or try and craft a new global system? If military order is not maintained by the United States, then who will do it instead? Who can do it?